Power 98.7 Podcast. Live on channel 889 on DSTV Audio Bouquet. Power 98.7. Now we're talking. Oh eight six one nine eight seven triple zero. Though that's where you're reaching us. Tweet me as well at Seven Gambula and at Power FM nine eight seven. Uh, here, this is uh, uh, Mulotzi. Hey, says I still blame uh, our number one. He set the precedence by violating the constitution. So every Tom, Dick, and Harry does as they want. Um, I think also uh, uh, making reference to to that call there um, from uh, um, from that student uh, teacher, Ms. Peter from Pretoria, uh, saying that he's seeing all sorts of things. And it's very unfortunate that uh, um, uh, the learners need to, you know, are in fact forced to experience that on a, on a daily basis. It needs to be addressed. In, in what way, though? In what way should it be addressed? Let me speak now to Charlene Dudley, uh, who is with the African Christian Democratic Party. They've proposed uh, a, a, a bill here which would make it illegal for women to get an abortion from week 13, of their pregnancy unless there's evidence that the pregnancy endangers endangers the woman's life or the fetus is severely malformed. The bill would also make it illegal for doctors to perform abortions from week 13 uh, where, the, where the pregnancy poses a risk um, of injury to the fetus, uh, which is something that is currently allowed. So current legislation says that any woman may have an abortion up to 12 weeks into the pregnancy. Thank you very much uh, for, for, for joining us, uh, um, Sherlyn, M- MP uh, with the SCDP. Unpack this a bit for us, um, if, if 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 you would, and and uh, I suppose there, there is, of course, specific emphasis on how far long the pregnancy is. Sure. Good morning, and good morning to your listeners. You know, knowing the deep concern of so many that women in South Africa facing a pregnancy crisis are exceptionally vulnerable, the ACDB is once again submitting proposals to Parliament for a private members' bill. And um, the the idea is to improve the present situation. So the amendments do not speak to abortion on demand within the first trimester, as you said, but they seek to ensure sufficient mandatory counselling to enable a more fully informed choice. Now, counselling both before and after termination of pregnancy is currently not mandatory, and genuine informed consent is seldom obtained and sufficient information is just not made available. So the men not only um, also delete certain circumstances in which a pregnancy may be terminated. The idea there, of course, is seriously, no woman should feel that her only option is to kill her child. And no child deserves to die because its parents are poor. So since the Principal Act was passed, modern medical science has made enormous strides um, it's accepted that the fetus is viable at 20 weeks after gestation and c- congenital deformities can more readily be corrected by surgery before or after birth. So things like the vague reference to proposal uh, to the possible risk to the fetus in the third trimester is illogical. Um, serious abnormalities are covered, in fact by a provision in the second trimester. It sounds as though you, you make the assumption that uh, women who choose ad- uh, abortion for themselves go in there not knowing what their options are. Uh, yes. You know, let's put it this way. Um, what harm can be done by ensuring that a woman knows what it is exactly that she's facing? You know, if you're going for a tonsillitis uh, operation, you can't say, I don't want to hear about the operation. You go in there and it is very important in terms of the law that you understand what you're saying yes to. Uh, you, you know, and, and, and people have a very strange idea. It's almost as if people think that it's going to stop every abortion just by ensuring that women understand exactly what it is that they're facing. When in actual fact, we are a country that has embraced democracy. We really value the fact that we have choice, but we talk about informed choice. Um, and so hiding the truth from people, um, clearly, as you say, is unlikely to change people's minds. 
But if you make if you make it mandatory, though, are you not removing the choice in, in in all of this? If you say people should now be forced to to go through counselling before they do this, what choice do they have? Well, look, if you have going to have a knee operation, you do not have a choice to not hear what it is that the doctor's going to do to your knee, what the surgeon's going to do to your knee. You, it is it, it's a legal requirement because you could then sue the, the hospital afterwards by saying. Uh, nobody told me exactly what was going to happen. So it's a simple, normal legal requirement that we don't withhold the truth from people. You actually make sure that people are not in such a dilemma that at that moment they're actually crazy, they don't want to hear what's going on. You make sure that people are thinking rationally, that they've thought through what's going on, that they've faced all the facts, and that they're able to make that kind of informed choice. Current, if we go back to to just uh, the the weeks here, currently, essentially, the you know current legislation is makes abortions accessible to all women uh, up to their twentieth week, right? Because we we also include when we say uh, you know between weeks thirteen and twenty, when we talk about uh, risks uh, to to the fetus or to the mother, we also include also other other circumstances like their their social or economic circumstances. Your proposal yes. um, mm-hmm. it, it eliminates that or, or excludes that. Yes, so what we're basically saying is obviously during that first trimester, a person can consider any of those things and make that decision. During the second trimester, at a time when, the, when that baby is actually viable, uh, that it seems really arbitrary and irrational that a doctor who has no idea of the woman's social and economic circumstances um, suddenly makes a decision on whether the person has enough money to afford a child or not. And the fact that we live in a society where surely, should we not at least strive to be a society that's there for women facing desperate times? by ensuring that they're well informed about options, safe houses, grants, adoption, etc., at a you know, at a time when um and, and, and for the child. What child deserves to die because its parents are poor? And and is that could could we would we not be then discriminating in the worst kind of way? Um being a society where babies can only live if their parents are rich. Uh, of people, if the parents, you know, though, you, choose to to terminate the the pregnancy, uh, influenced by the economic circumstances, that also should be should be supported, yeah. isn't it? Isn't that isn't that uh, rational? Well, what, what, and they would have that choice within the first trimester. Once it, once we move into a second trimester, where the child is in fact viable, um, you know, then it's really not a time to be. Um, suddenly deciding, can I afford you, can't I? Because then why not do it when the child's a year old, three years old, six years old? Uh, you, you know, so basically, this is, it, it, it's just, um, plus the fact that it's, it's, it's a clause that's there, giving a medical person suddenly some kind of discretion okay. over a person, when a person's panicking over a financial situation. Mm. Surely the solution is not to throw kill your baby as sure. an option. Mm-hmm. Sherilyn, that's where we'll, we'll have uh, to leave it. It's one that uh, we will, of course, uh, carry on with soon um, because, the, as, as one would expect, uh, there have been some opposing views to this. But thank you very much for your time. Sherilyn Dudley, uh, who is a member of parliament uh, with the uh, African Christian Democratic Party. That's our time this morning. Thank you very much uh, for engaging us. I'll see you again tomorrow, 3 until 6. Power 98.7 Podcasts.